With domestic travel on the rise and international travel soon to follow, I think we could all use a little refresher on the carry-on items that will not be making it past airport security. Tuning in for the next 10 minutes can help save you from travel delays as well as even jail time as you go through standard TSA airport security. One of the most common things that travelers end up stopped for would be breaking the liquid limit rule. The liquid limit, also referred to by TSA as the 311 liquid rule, indicates that each liquid must be in a 3.4 ounce or smaller container and that containers must fit in a one quart size bag and that each passenger is only allowed to bring one bag with them. I understand. The quantity limits are pretty simple, but what gets me in trouble and is the main reason that I get stopped is because my definition of a liquid differs from TSA's definition. Gel, cream, or liquid makeup items and personal items will be counted towards your liquid limit. This is going to include liquid foundation, nail polish, and even mascara that is in a tube considering it is a gel. Personal items to think about include toothpaste, as well as sunscreen, face cream, face wash, any cream or gel deodorant, bug spray, or anything else that's in an aerosol container that's going to count as a liquid. Even if the container is only half full, it cannot be over the 3.4 ounce size. So this, for example, is 135 milliliters and 3.4 ounces is 100 milliliters. So even if this was almost empty, I could not bring it through TSA security, as it would be over my liquid limit based on the container size, regardless of how much is actually inside of it. Drinks, even if they are sealed, like an unopened can of Coke, cannot go through security. Any creamy or liquidy foods are also going to be counted as a liquid. This would include cooked oatmeal, soup, mashed potatoes, and even an unopened jar of peanut butter. Something else to know with food is that the TSA put a new rule in during the summer of 2020 where any food items you are bringing through security in your carry-on, they need to be placed in a separate clear plastic bag and put through the scanner along with your liquid bag and your electronics. Definitely separate them in advance to avoid any delays or being sent to the back of the security line to repack your items. Another item that would be counted as a liquid that you may not consider would be souvenir items like a snow globe or a magic eight ball. Give this video a like if you have ever been stopped by airport security and then let us know in the comments what you were stopped for. You'll be happy to know that there are a few liquidy items that will be excluded from your liquid limit. This includes prescription drugs as well as any baby infant, baby infant, infant food, milk, or formula. And then I was surprised to learn that hand sanitizer is also excluded by TSA in your liquid limit. You can actually bring up to 12 ounces of hand sanitizer with you without it counting towards your liquids. Frequently sanitizing your hands is a great start to staying healthy while traveling. Along with wearing a mask, not touching your face, and even opting for the window seat instead of the aisle as this is going to limit your contact with other travelers as they move about the cabin. I highly recommend that you sanitize your seating area and all personal items and devices like your cell phone. All right, moving on to other things that you should not be packing in your carry-on and that will not be making it past TSA security. Anything that looks like a weapon, even if it is obviously fake, like a foam sword or a colorful water gun. You also can't bring anything that sounds like a weapon. An example of this would be those Christmas crackers they are a tradition in my family. Let me know if you use them as well, I'm very curious. But when you go to crack them, they make a big loud snapping sound, which could sound like a gunshot or something else, and therefore they are not allowed to be brought into the cabin with you on the plane and not allowed through security. Well, you are rather distracting. He makes filming rather difficult. Thankfully, he's getting the cone off in a few days. He's been very good with it, but he literally runs into everything. You also can't bring sharp items that in any possible way could be used as a weapon. 
You're allowed to bring scissors as long as the blade is four inches or less. You are also allowed to bring a wine bottle opener, but what you need to do is make sure that you don't have one that, Holly, this is dangerous, that also has a knife on it for the wine bottle label. This would not be allowed. You cannot bring sporting equipment that could also be used as a weapon, like a golf club or a baseball bat, and then things that actually are weapons, but you may not think of them as a weapon in the traditional sense. An example of this would be pepper spray or mace. Side note, what's the difference between a hippo and a zippo? One's just a little lighter. This is relevant as you are actually allowed to bring one of them in your carry-on through security. You can bring a cigarette lighter, whether it's the Zippo, refillable style, or one of the disposable ones. What you cannot bring with you is one of, I don't know what they're called, one of these type of lighters. Not the one with the, the flip, those are okay. Once you do board the plane, it is important that you keep your cigarettes and your lighter tucked away and do not pull them out on the plane. Smoking is a federal offense on an airplane and you will get yourself into a lot of trouble. Speaking of smoking, something that would get you into an equal amount or likely even more trouble than smoking a cigarette on an airplane would be traveling with marijuana. Do not put marijuana in your carry-on bag. Even if it is legal from where you are flying out of, it may not be legal where you are flying into. And if somehow you get it past TSA security and the dogs don't sniff it out, Ollie would sniff it out, wouldn't you? You could end up in a lot of trouble if your destination is somewhere where marijuana is highly illegal. An example would be Dubai, where if you are caught having it, not only will it be confiscated, but you'll be subject to a minimum prison sentence of four years. Don't pack marijuana in your carry-on. Learning and understanding the TSA guidelines is going to help keep your return to travel smooth and as stress-free as possible. I also highly recommend that you check out the TSA Facebook page if you have a question about a specific item. This way you can get clarity and that peace of mind is priceless. Especially when there's already so much uncertainty with going to the airport and planning a trip in general. Keep in mind that there is a second time that your belongings are going to be scrutinized as you go through the airport. Things can seem a little overwhelming here because what the gate agent is looking for as you go to board the plane is very different from what the TSA agent was looking for as you put your carry-on items through the security scanner. Which is why in my next video, I'll cover what you are not allowed to bring with you as you go to board the plane, despite having made it through TSA security. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to give this video a like if you found it at all helpful. And I will see you back here for that video next week. Have a good one. Bye. Wait till you're done there, puppy.